Welcome back. We're almost out of glades and jumping down into Blackbird Burrows. We just have a little bit of movement and one trick to get us in there. So let's go to the video. So as we're moving down here, uh, what I'm doing is setting up a dodge on the slime below by going above this sort of mossy hanging thing off the log that's in the middle that Ori is above right now. If you hit this spot and drop down from here, your slime dodge is very simple. You just hold left and do a full height jump and his shots will not hit you. Like so. Now of course if you miss that position, it's perfectly fine. Um, all you have to do is do a normal turn back dodge on the slime like you have done on other slimes and glades. It's not a particularly difficult one, it's just a little bit faster to not have to turn back. So as we head down here, I'll note that uh, I didn't mention it as I was doing it in the start of this guide, but in the previous video we came up this jump pad after leaving from Sign, and I killed one of the spores over to the right here as I went up there. It's good to just kill as many of these as you can, and do as much damage to them as you can during your first pass through, just so you have less shooting to do when you arrive here now. So we'll clean up the ones that are left over and jump towards this. Now there we're in a cutscene where a sign tells us what spirit walls are. And we're immediately going to do a trick on one to skip the black root entering cutscene. This trick is a very powerful tool used for skipping cutscenes in this run, used for other glitches in other categories. And this is called Save Anywhere. So the way that this works is first we have to have our UI on because we need to be able to start a text box with the ability screen up. So we turn the UI on after the last dialogue line from that cutscene goes away and we're able to move again. And then we open the ability tree, we click on the experience orb thing to get this dialogue that tells you, oh, this is how much experience you have to get another point, blah, blah. And then what you're going to do is you're going to dismiss this with a uh, proceed and cancel on the same frame. So manually done, it's by default left and right click or A and B. Um, you can set up a bind to just press these on the same frame. That's doable through the game's key rebindings file explained in the configuration guide. Um, and that's recommended just so you can do this trick quickly and consistently every time. So by doing this, dismissing this dialog box here with the proceed and cancel, we gain the ability to move with the ability menu still up. And this is useful for two reasons. One is we're able to level an ability anywhere. When we level an ability, the game gets saved. So this is why the trick is called save anywhere. It's because we're able to save in places where you're not normally able to place a spirit link. Now, secondly, most cutscenes in Ori work in a way that once the cutscene begins, if the file is saved, it will write data that the cutscene has already done. The cutscene will not start again. So many cutscenes will be skipped by starting the cutscene, saving the game somehow, either by using a rekindle or a save anywhere. Since we don't yet have rekindle and we can't place a save close enough to this cutscene anyways to use it, uh, we're going to opt for a save anywhere here, and we'll be doing this for some other cutscenes throughout the run too. So, I've turned the UI back off um, so that I skip the dialogue line of signs saying, oh hey, look at this Naru statue over here, and now walking into the cutscene area. Now, let me, let me rewind a little bit so it's showing the experience number. So, this is also an important time to make note of what your experience is because we have to set up another trick after uh, we go through Blackroot called the Franky Walk where we get another time to level up. And this time to level up, unlike the one at a wall jump, is quite important. So uh, the experience numbers that you need to keep in mind is between 25 and 43 experience away from level, you need to kill two slimes in Blackroot Pearls to set up the Franky Walk. If your experience is 37 to 50, you can kill three slimes. If you're 44 to 50, you have to kill three slimes. So just bear that in mind. We'll get to that trick again after Blackroot, but this is your best time to check your experience number and figure out how many slimes you need to kill. So 
Uh, let's resume. So, we're walking into the cutscene here. Uh, the moment Ori turns to face the statue, right there, you're able to level an ability and reload the file. So, do that. And the cutscene is skipped. There's still a bit of a slow walking zone there, but that's not a big deal. This saves about 20 seconds, so it's well worth doing. So now that we're in Blackroot, this entire area is on a global cycle. Well, at least the main room is on a, on a cycle that loads as soon as we load back in. So our movement this entire time matters to make the next platform cycle. And the lasers on the right side of the room are also loaded. So once you get consistent at the first part of Blackroot, you'll notice consistent results with your lasers and platforms. I'm just going to rewind here briefly to show uh, some particular jump here. Between these last two horizontal platforms here, these platforms bob up and down. So I'd wait for just a moment there so that the second platform is bobbing down when I jump to it. Uh, it doesn't have to be all the way down, but if the first platform is low and the second platform is high, you'll just miss and fall into the spikes. So you want to take a moment to set that up. So let's just let this play through again. And coming up after these platforms is a bit of a precise jump up to this 100 experience orb up above. This is faster to go this way than to go around. And since we went over there and picked up the orb, it will now follow us through Blackroot. It has an anti-soft lock measure that they put in. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a not quite full height jump over to the right wall here. Um, <clears throat> if we're a little bit higher than this position that we're at now, uh, you'll just slip down the wall. You're not able to wall jump up there because the slope is not agreeable. And then we'll jump over to the left and you can kind of take your pick over how you jump up from this point. You can do two jumps up the left wall, which is what I do here, or you can jump back to the right and back over to the left. It's up to you, basically. So uh, I'll just rewind to show that jump in its entirety without the pauses. This orb will drop, we'll pick it up to get through this wall, and that will give us another ability point, which we'll use for another save anywhere later. This is a pretty good place for a safety save if you want. Uh, you basically have one free safety save you can put anywhere you want in Blackroot. So, down there, like as you're leveling up, is not a bad place for it. Now, since my movement has been pretty good throughout this black route, I know that I don't really need to rush myself on these lasers. I will make this platform cycle all the same. Uh, you probably just need to do a bunch of runs, practice of the early game before you get used to how the platforms work in black route, but eventually you'll notice consistent results with them. And now there's a little bit of a pause here. And what I'm doing at this point is the platforms to the right that I'm going to ride next over near that slime are already loaded. They're already moving. So I'm not losing any time by waiting over here because I would just be waiting over to the right anyways. And what this does is when you're in this position on the left edge of this platform, the platforms in the dash room are not yet loaded. If we load them immediately as we run over to the right, then uh, we'll miss the cycle. We won't be able to get on those platforms in the dash room. We'll have to wait for them to go up and come back down. By waiting here, we make it so that we can catch the cycle in the dash room, which saves us a little bit of time. So we wait until uh, the platform behind us goes away, and then we move over. So let's just watch that without a pause. So we wait until that goes away, and then we move over. So kill that slime there, um, and then we'll head up to the lantern and move on. Now I'm gonna pause here for just a little bit and show if your experience entering Blackroot was less than 36 to level and you got the experience from the slime that gets killed by the level up down at the bottom lanterns, you would now level up off of this slime and that's really bad. So we'll just go in and show a way to avoid killing that slime and avoid his shots in case you're you know, unable to take his experience because you really don't want to level up there. So let's take a look at that. All right, I want to hop into game for just a moment here to explain how to dodge this slime. If your experience was too high, to just kill him and take it. So you stand on the right side of this platform, he shoots once and misses, and then after that his shots pretty much will just miss you. So it's just standing on the right there to make a miss if you can't afford to take his experience. Okay, let's continue. Resuming the video where we left off, just continuing on through. 
because we did the cycle manipulation, this platform is waiting for us. Turn the UI on here, might as well, because there's no dialogue in this section. And we have to do a save anywhere soon, so we need the UI on. Now note, I just reflexively did the movement I'm used to doing in this room, where you drop that light orb one platform early, and then you jump through here. Uh, this can be a little bit spooky, because that laser comes back and can kill you. So if you're not comfortable with that, <laughs> just uh, jump one platform further with the light orb and drop it there, and then you'll be perfectly safe. So pull this lever up here, and then we'll be preparing for the darkness cutscene skip. And the way that this works is you start a save anywhere, and then once you once the plat once the pedestal starts to move up, you do the save. So I'm not going to talk here so you can hear the audio. So there you go, that like ka chunk kind of thing as the platform begins to move up is the moment you save and that will fully skip the darkness cutscene. If you go early then you just have to wait for the cutscene to play out. You can still activate the dash tree after but it loses all the time that you would potentially save. So now that we have dash I'm going to once again go in game and we're going to talk a little bit about dash mechanics before we move out of Blackroot. So let's go there. Right, so a bit regarding movement speeds in this game. When you're just running or jumping along, your movement speed is 11.66 units per second, which is not too great. When you compare it to dashing, consecutive dashing along the ground like this gives you an average movement speed of 32.5 units per second, so about three times as fast as you moved before. So clearly, whenever you can, you want to be spamming dashes along the ground. So then the question arises, what to do when you have to cross a gap. You could just jump over it, but jumping is not too fast. Um, sometimes you can set it up so that you can just dash straight over a gap, but you might get sucked down like that, or you might just not be able to set up the distance for it correctly. And that's where this technique called dash gliding comes in. Now a dash glide looks like this, and the way that a dash glide is done is by dashing while holding a direction, left or right, releasing that direction, and then jumping, all during the dash, which you have about uh, just under a quarter of a second to do. So it's not a super tight timing window or anything. You can get varied dash glides like an immediate one, where you dash and immediately let go, or you can kind of do it later in the dash, like something like that. And dash gliding will move you through the air at a speed of 15 units per second. So it's a bit better than jumping. Obviously chain dashing is a lot better, but to cross gaps like this, it's nice to use a series of dash glides. So movement out of here like so can be pretty nice. Let's load back there. Uh, dash gliding is never necessary. It's just a useful technique to be aware of, and it's worth starting to practice it, because once you get it down, then you can use it all over the place. But in all of these situations, you can just move without dash gliding. Just dash and then jump, and you can do all of the things that you need to do for the run. I'll be using dash gliding a fair bit in this guide, but just keep in mind that any time I use it, there is a way that you can do it without dash gliding, if you're having some trouble with the time. Alright, let's continue. Alright, assuming the video, we're just going to be doing our dashes and dash glides in photo black group. Now, uh, one little tricky dash here, this kind of short dash I do along this platform, that is called a glide cancel. Now what this is, is just pressing the bind for feather by default shift on keyboard. So one of the triggers I think on controller. Uh, this instantly cancels dash, which is useful in this case um, because when you dash into a wall, you have to wait for the normal duration of the dash to expire before you can wall jump. So if you want to dash just a short distance, you can dash into glide cancel. But you can just ignore all of that because it's kind of a minor optimization. Just wanted to mention what that was in case uh, it was sitting there confusing. How did he dash so short? So continuing. Here is a kind of an important dash glide. Um, if you don't get that one, you have to walk through the slow zone that's left behind from that cutscene skip initially, so that dash glide saves a fair bit of time. And is probably worth going for, even if you're not too great at dash gliding yet. Just go for it, and if you miss it, you know, just walk through the cutscene zone. Because that's what you would be doing anyways. <laughs> 
So that gets us out of Blackroot, and coming up next is the Frankie Walk, which we'll cover in the next video.